I need to turn my camera off, and you know what? Well done. Oh, uh, there, there's the camera. Hello. Sorry. It's been a long time. It's five days. Oh, God. It's been a while. Uh, I freaking, I still love Dream Daddy, though. It's great. I'm sorry, I'm a little late to the train for Dream Daddy. This is like the second episode, I guess. Uh. Here's a free game. It costs 14 bucks to text people. I hate that stuff. But anyways, we're gonna try it. Wonder what kind of people we have unlocked. If it's the bullshit ones, I I'm leaving. I'm, I'm literally leaving. Oh, Robert, here we go. I'm just gonna move it a little bit upwards. Sorry, my thumb gets in the way a lot. It's also nine o'clock at night, and it's a Friday, so that means I get to have all the free time I want until I pass out. <laughs> oh, and I'm not very happy at the moment, guys. I'm sorry if I'm not very in the mood, it's just my girlfriend broke up with me and basically lied about our whole relationship. So, I'm kind of upset right now, and I'm going to try not to cry throughout this whole recording. Let's get through this. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Hey. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? <laughs> we just had coffee. Have you ever known me to play by the rules? Your father is a rebel, sweetie. Now, all aboard the train to Sleepy Time Junction. Sleep is for the week! <laughs> I hate myself. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps coming uh, Craig. Ah. <laughs> Let's see this game. It's so long. I forgot. I hear heavy footsteps coming up from behind us. Derek, bro. Oh, God. I forgot. I named him Derek. I turn around and... 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 and, and, and I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Craig? Bro! Bro! Holy wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend, Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, hello, cute baby. Aw, oh, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves at her. River gargles happily. Or gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? <laughs> Leave me alone. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exam with bad hangovers and the next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? I was working out in California, just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding, a man and I just moved to the side of the town. How's Smashly doing? Leave me alone, Facebook. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. She actually still goes by Smashly, and uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins! You have three kids? Ain't life something, bro? Right? Cake Stan Craig, a father of three. Cake Stan Craig? Oh, <laughs> it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Is that a thing? It's, it's a... It's, it's a thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Right. He was very good at it. Ah, uh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog, and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Barbara along for, you know, resistance training. You jog daily? I jog. 
Yearly. <laughs> where were you five minutes ago? On January 1st, when I promised myself that I'd gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should try, you should, you should join me sometime. <laughs> I don't know. Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. Alright, sure. Sounds great. Great, let's get, let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives us a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Why is that? The Craig I knew is not to be fit for responsibility of any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened up a new jar of mar marinara sauce and then drank it like it was a thing normal people do. It was unholy, and then I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. I mean, technically... He's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Story of my, of my life. Amanda and I flop down on the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Too bad we're gonna be putting my stuff right back into this box in a few months. No, don't say that. Aw, oh, Dad, it's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just... You're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day. And I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photographer major. You promise? Uh. Of course. Are you gonna be okay with your lon by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Yeah. A dog? Yeah. Forget art school. I'll stay here. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? Yeah. Medium-sized dog, hang your teeth around the neck, I get to name it, that's what it'll, what it'll cost for me to give up all my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. Uh, that is the description of Brian's dog. What's the dog's name? Max. I think that's the dog's name, Max. <laughs> Amanda laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college, Amanda darts over to the envelope and shuffles through them, pulls one out, one out and throws the rest back on the floor. Yeah. This is from McGowan College Art of Design. Open it! Hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. <sighs> yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. She takes a deep breath and rips the open letter with her teeth. We have letter openers, but okay. Hmm. Hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth and scanning the letters. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, blah, blah. Um, we... Her face drops. <sighs> Regrets inform me that we were unable to offer your admission to McGowan College, in Art, College of Art and Design. Uh, Amanda throws a letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Uh, it's okay, I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put all the... Uh, all the expenses... Your ex experimental stuff in my portfolio. There. Their admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much you work, how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. There. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but... I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Ugh. So you need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently have already plans for tonight, so you have the new place all to yourself. Yeah, what are your plans? Quick, think of plans. <laughs> I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves, the lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man, you know, the ones all the kids these days are doing. Alright, but I'm not coming to pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to go out. Nice. Which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. The game on TV. 
It's somewhere other than here. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna do drugs and commit some light arson with Emma's. Concerned you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. And then it's drugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to the white collar crimes by this point. Maybe money laundering uh, at the least? I'm a street rat, Pops. Street rat. <laughs> You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? Uh, yes, Dad. Just making sure. Yeah. I give her a pat on the head. Yeah. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? Uh, no. Making fun of sports is so played out. Hmm. Alright then. I'll, I, I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget that you have the meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Alright, Mr. Vega. Ah, <gasps> oh, Hugo! Ah, uh, Hugo's one of my top favorites. I, I gotta say that. Hugo is one of my favorites. I love him. Even though he's way too smart, I, I love him. <laughs> yep, totally remember. I'll be there. Remembered. I can't say words. Oh, if you guys are wondering, as I did cut my hair. It's been a while. Uh, wow. Guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda hasn't still hasn't shown me around to use the GPS on my phone, so I'm just taking a picking direction and walking in it. Let's go this way. Cool. Okay. Marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could it be? Jim and Kim's. A big burned out neon sign hangs above the tiny dive bar, Jim and Kim's, huh? Alright, it'll do. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of the pool ball sounds in the back as the patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover over the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. A pulpa seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, the team of my preference is not only playing, but is currently on, in the league, which is always, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I suddenly cheer on my, my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any con Confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing the instinct, distinct colors of the team I dislike, although I believe they're from the de demeanor like me. Demeanor like me. The passion for the game is all in good fun. Oh. A middle aged woman holding up a nearly empty wine glass slides up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hi, Mary. Good to see ya. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? Oh, no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Derek, by the way. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the league. If they keep this up, they'll win the game. They'll win the game with ease. Oh, I love that team, and I also love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Mary, I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh, buy a gal a drink. Sure, let's buy you a drink. I must reluctantly. I was reluctantly signal the bartender to order Mary another glass of wine. Neil jokes back and forth with Mary. They're clearly friends, and this clearly isn't her first time doing this. She tips her glass at me. Suppose I gotta keep you company now. Hey. So, what do you want to what do you want to know? Uh, what's the latest gossip around here? You came to the right broad. I'm an observer. I watch people. I see everything. Know everyone. Not not nothing gets past me. So, so what? I thought you were gonna. I forgot what we were talking about. About the gossip? You said nothing gets past you? Oh, right. I'm also steel trap. Confidential to a fault. So what else can you tell me about this part of town? Hey. It's quiet. That's for sure. If you want an idyllic life, little life with the white picket fences, this is a place to do it. But every town has a secret, you know? She takes a sip of her drink. That was a little too ominous for my taste. She leans closer. Oh. Would you like to learn some of my secrets? Oh, boy. Uh, maybe some other time? Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close to the one I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points on the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team. 
fucking Robert. It's the broody man from the copy sp copy coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping the whis sip sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, you must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I disagree with that. Based on the our win loss record, I say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong. Since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close and we with both sides playing the hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple through the bar. I raise a flexible glass of the man drinking whiskey. He raises it in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us as based on a mutual love love for the game. He motions the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks. I'm Derek. I forgot the mouth I gave the dad. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you. Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's Peach. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best par, in par, best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim, and Jim or Kim that runs this place? No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? Love shots. Thank God. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Didn't he just give us one? <laughs> Here's to your health. We take the shot. We take the shots. The whiskey burns is going down, but I try to harm it. My hardest look tough. Wait, I think this is what, I'm, what making friends is. Okay, Derek, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. I like your jacket. Thanks. Uh, 